It's a different game, one that has many flaws, but it's not why we're drawn to it. I won't lie and say it isn't any more than a nostalgic trip. Very fun experience, one in which I was able to beat without much complaint. And before talking about this Black Sheep Spongebob title, I personally enjoyed its successor, the Battle for Bikini Bottom title, but Battle for Bikini Bottom didn't leave much for the imagination. Many elements found in the game were accurately depicted to the cartoon, and I could already hear so many people typing in the comment section that I sound like an idiot. It's good if you want to feel like you're in the cartoon, but I liked how the levels in Revenge of the Flying Dutchman felt uncanny and liminal to the overall world we know. A few places such as Spongebob Street, the Krusty Krab, and the Tree Dome are correctly portrayed to the show's standards, but everything else is what gave the game a bigger identity. Making the levels completely different from their cartoon counterparts made the experience much more unique and gave elements that aren't bound to the limitations of the source material. This led to many enemies being unique, which critics and reviewers hated, and I couldn't imagine wailing on the common folk from Bikini Bottom, or even enemies such as Dirty Bubble. Battle for Bikini Bottom got away with using robots as baddies so they didn't have to do this, and the creators would have likely seen no backlash if they decided to use unique enemies as well. You can listen to about any generic peanut butter gamer YouTuber wannabe who wants to trash on this game for being bad, acting like the only redeeming quality was that Mr. Krabs' voice was actually the real voice actor. For many, including myself, it was still a very very enjoyable experience. I think a reason why a lot of us who like this game can get past all of its bullshit is because it gets the one thing correct, which is the platforming. I hear so many people shit on the controls, and the controls are no better than a decent Mario game. SpongeBob does not feel slippery and goes exactly where I wanted him to go, which is what you want from a platformer. Some level designs have major flaws where you can skip large portions like with the lighthouse, and there's also other sections where you're waiting for the jellyfish platforms a little too long. But people who say the game plays badly just wants to shit on the game like the majority does. I can't help but love this game for the many differences that this game has on the franchise's locations. It gives areas like Goo Lagoon and Jellyfish Fields a feeling in which the game world was trying to present new ideas for the world of Spongebob. A game like Spongebob Revenge is so great because it gave kids like me a new Spongebob experience where Battle for Bikini Bob realizes locations from the show in perfect fashion, which led to less imagination for the players. Chum World, which is the weakest of the four main levels, has fun gimmicks evolved still with the big tent section and the ambitious mini golf puzzle. And all but a few puzzles were troubling to where I had to spend more time than I wanted to on specific sections. Yet while I was playing the game at no particular time did I get frustrated and want to turn it off. Some sections were slightly confusing to follow after completing a certain location, but it wasn't nothing a quick google search couldn't fix. GameCube owners may be quicker to defend this experience since they weren't affected by the save glitches that appeared on the PlayStation 2 version. And yeah, the music might get annoying, but I managed to listen to 100 repeats of the Jellyfish costume jingle while it was on non-stop. It's really easy to enjoy something when you don't have someone in your ear telling you it's a piece of shit. And that's how I feel about this game. It's no game of the year, but it's far from being a bad title. Everyone chalks this game up for being the reason Big Sky Entertainment went under, but from what I read and heard, it sounded like multiple issues with development strategies led the company into the ground. And if you find this game for cheap because it will most likely still be cheap, I recommend playing this short 10 hour video game experience. I make a ton of nostalgic content similar to this from our 2000s childhood, so if you like this, check this video out right here and I'll see you over on it. Hey Squidward.